Welcome back to Falcon Physician Review's online review for USMLE Step 1. This is Microbiology Module 5. We'll talk about infection control and start talking about antibiotics. Welcome to the Microbiology Module 5, Infection Control, Antibiotics and Vaccines for Falcon Physician Review's online review for USMLE Step 1. Infection control methods include sterilization, which means complete removal or killing of all viable organisms. Pasteurization is a method where rapid heating and cooling of milk is designed to kill milk-borne pathogens such as Mycobacterium bovis, Brucella, and Listeria. It's also used for juice and other natural beverages. Disinfection is the removal or killing of disease-causing organisms, but not, not all organisms. Physical methods used to provide sterilization include heat. Saturated steam especially is the mechanism by which autoclaves sterilize things. This is steam under pressure. So you've got 15 pounds of pressure at over 121 degrees centigrade for about 20 minutes sterilizes. It should kill everything. There are spores that are resistant to low temperature boiling at atmospheric pressures. And so if you combine heat, pressure, and time, you should kill everything eventually. Ethylene oxide is a potent sterilizer that kills by disrupting membranes. Ultraviolet radiation destroys DNA by forming thymine-thymine pairs on adjacent DNA strands. This, allows the, this keeps the bacteria from being able to replicate. High efficiency particulate air filters for air or nitrocellulose filters are, have a known pore size which keeps bacteria or other sized particles from being passed through from one side to the other. That's why you wear the mask or the HEPA mask so you don't get bacteria through in, in, inhaled into your system. Chemical methods uh, of killing bacteria include membrane damaging agents. These are detergents, alcohols, and phenols. Protein modifying agents include chlorine, iodine, hydro, iodophores, hydrogen peroxide, and all oxidized sulfhydryls. Ethylene oxide and formaldehyde are also protein modifying agents which can kill a lot of things. Antibiotics exhibit selectivity, which means they're more toxic for the bacterium than they are for us. This distinguishes antibiotics from disinfectants. A disinfectant will kill our cells just as well as it will bacterial cells. Antibiotics are more selective for the bacteria, and so they damage them much more than they do us. Even though you have a highly selective antibiotic, you can still have side effects from it. The therapeutic index is defined as the ratio of host toxic dose to the effective therapeutic dose, which means the higher the therapeutic index, the better the antibiotic. If it kills a bacteria at one microgram, but causes human disease at 50 micrograms, that's a whole lot safer than something that causes human disease at five micrograms. Antibiotics can be bactericidal, which means they kill the bacteria, or they can be bacteriostatic, which means they reversibly inhibit growth. Once you take away the bacteria, or once you take away the antibiotic, the bacteria can grow again. Antibiotic susceptibility testing includes quantitative measures of the in vitro activity of antibiotics. One measure of this is the minimum inhibitory concentration. This is the lowest concentration that inhibits visible growth, and it's used to measure the effectiveness of a bacteriostatic agent. Alternatively, the minimum bactericidal concentration is the lowest concentration that kills 99.9% .9 of the original inoculum in a given time. This figure demonstrates the minimum inhibitory concentration. What you have is dilutions of the antibiotic as you go from left to right. And the flasks each contain fluid with bacterium in them. The leftmost flask has the highest concentration of antibiotic, and as you move to the right, you get less and less antibiotic. You'll see that the last clear flask is the concentration of the antibiotic you need to inhibit growth. The very next one to the right has gray, which means the water is more turbid, which means the bacteria are growing. That's how you determine the minimum inhibitory concentration. Combination therapy of antibiotics is where you use two or more antibiotics. You do this to prevent the emergence of resistant strains. You do it to cover all possibilities when you don't know exactly what the organism is. And you do it to take advantage of the antibiotic synergism, enhance the bactericidal activity. Antagonism is where one antibiotic interferes with the activity of another. Broad spectrum 
means antibiotics that inhibit the variety of gram-positive and gram-negative organisms. The broader the spectrum, the more bugs that it's able to kill. A narrow spectrum antibiotic inhibits a narrow range of organisms, only a few. There are five basic mechanisms of antibiotics. We need to remember these and integrate them with pharmacology. You can inhibit cell wall synthesis, and this is the most common mechanism. You can also inhibit protein synthesis or translation, which is the second largest class of antibiotics. You can alter cell membranes. You can inhibit nucleic acid synthesis. You can cause anti-metabolite activity, or you can have specific anti-mycobacterials. We're going to go through each of those in turn. Examples of each of the different types of antimicrobial activity are given in this, in this table. So inhibiting peptidoglycan cross-linking, you can see, is common with the penicillins and the cephalosporins. If you inhibit peptidoglycan synthesis, you're, you've got bacitration or vancomycin. When you want to target the DNA tuple isomerase, that means you've got a quinolone, like levoquin, a fluoroquin alone. When you want to target the 30S ribosomal subunit, you've got aminoglycosides or tetracyclines. This is an important, a very important table to memorize because it has all the families of antibiotics and their targets. Frequently you'll be asked on step one, not necessarily what bug or what drug, but what mechanism the drug uses to kill the bug. When you're talking about inhibition of cell wall synthesis, you need to know about beta-lactam antibiotics. These inhibit peptidoglycan synthesis. You can get resistance in bugs to penicillins and cephalosporins. You can do that by keeping the drug from crossing your membrane, like the gram-negatives do. You can have it fail to bind to altered penicillin binding proteins. Or you can have hydrolysis of beta-lactamases. Some side effects of these include anaphylaxis to penicillins, which is usually IgE-mediated, and diarrhea, and that's mostly because the penicillins kill the normal gut bacteria. Vancomycin disrupts peptidoglycan cross-linkage. You can get resistance if you fail to cross gram-negative outer membranes because it's too big, and you can have some bugs which are intrinsically resistant uh, and they have a different pentapeptide terminus. One of the side effects you get from vancomycin is Redman syndrome. And we'll probably see that in questions. This is a figure of the beta-lactam unit. You can see here on the right, this four-walled square structure has a beta-lactamase, has a beta-lactam bond on the carbon-nitrogen bond. Beta-lactamases are enzymes in the bacteria which cleave the carbon-nitrogen bond. On the left, you'll see the molecule of penicillin highlighted in blue is the beta-lactam portion. All penicillins are going to have that beta-lactam subunit and they just have different things attached to it to give different selectivity. Let's recap Module 5. We talked about infection control. You should be familiar with some of the physical methods by which we have to kill cells. Also the concept of sensitivity, where we want to kill the bacteria more than we want to kill ourselves. Bactericidal and bacteriostatic should be clear in your mind. Also you should be familiar with the beta-lactam unit of penicillins. That's a major component of the penicillin family. It's what they have in common and it's a frequent target of penicillin binding proteins and other resistance factors found in bacteria. Up next, we're going to move on with more antibiotics in Module 6.